So in today's video, I want to talk to you about two years minimalism. What has changed? What have I maybe learned? I thought I would put together a video for you telling the story of how I got into it and let's say the three main lessons and takeaway that I would really say allow me to have a lot more freedom in my life, be more relaxed day to day, just chill out and not be worried about all the different stuff that I maybe have or not have. We'll talk about it in a second. So first of all, minimalism for me is just, let's say, really taking away the focus from owning a lot of stuff and rather putting in it on other things. First of all, the story. It started out in a way of me wanting to travel back in the day. I really was romanticizing the idea, as of right now it is, traveling the world. And also I wanted to be kind of like leaving everything behind in my little room with my parents. Uh, selling everything, kind of like ep epic story, I guess, you know? And uh, that's kind of like what I did. Maybe I'm gonna pull up some old footage for you right now. Why am I selling all this stuff? Uh, I think I filmed this video like four or five years ago. And back then I probably got rid of like 70% of the stuff that happened. So that was kind of like the first move. But then there was a big realization. I would say is one of the most amazing feelings that I probably had in all of my life, which is, I'm being dramatic here today, <laughs> which is when I started to travel, carry on only. So only having pretty much 10 kilograms, maybe smuggling a little bit more through carry on, let's say airlines, budget airlines, starting to travel. It was, I believe, 15 countries in a year. And after like three months, I realized, hey, I don't have that much. I don't need that much. And it's such a freeing feeling. And because I knew that I literally cannot buy anything because I'm already slightly like overweight with my luggage, I completely, let's say, put away the focus from wanting to ever really buy anything, clothing, big souvenirs. And while some people might enjoy it, that was really my intention at that point. And I experienced a lot of freedom from never really, let's say, um, tying myself up and wanting to have stuff. But then, let's say, coming back from a one year long, maybe you could call it backpacking trip, uh, never really were a backpacker in that sense, but being a back home back in the day. I got an apartment uh, a few months later and with that I really got myself into minimalism. Watching a lot of people on YouTube, uh, Matt Yavella was really blowing up on YouTube. I remember back in the day I did kind of like a video. Um, it was supposed to be like inspired by or parody in the end. Uh, just a little bit of let's say a copy joke uh, video. Um, uh, but still, sharing the message, spreading the word and uh, many other creators just basically talking about the idea of how you can clear up mental space in your life by not owning that much. And uh, before I'm gonna get with you into the benefits, basically, and um, yeah, like the apartment that I had, but obviously that's kind of like just, let's say, surface minimalism. And then there came a point again where I started to live, let's say, the travel, at this point you could call nomadic lifestyle and uh, gave up my apartment at this point, what is it, like eight months ago or something like that. And since then, again, living out of a carry-on, really limited in the things that I can buy. Maybe I have a box back at my parents' place with some winter clothing, but that is pretty much it. So that is, let's say, my minimalism story for the past two years. And to define the way why I do minimalism and the benefits that I got from it, mainly what I wanna share with you in this video, like the number one thing is just realizing how much mental space it clears up. It's like we all know it. The new phones come out, we get all excited about it every year, we maybe upgrade every two years. Uh, we just spend so much time, for example, wanting to get a new camera or upgrade, telling to ourselves like, hey, if we get the new camera, then, then I'll finally, let's say, start my video project. If I can get uh, whatever, just new exercise machine, then I'll finally get in shape. And we keep ourselves in the loops of, let's say, when I will buy this thing, then I will be able to do this or that. And when I started to see that, I actually don't need that much and I don't need most of the things I think I need to get the result that I wanna have, I was able to let go a lot of finding myself in these loops of wanting to always buy the next best thing. And what I realized is kind of like one of the big learnings and realizations is how much capacities now are free to actually do the thing that I wanted to do when I promised myself to get this 
thing. Like for example, with the camera, instead of researching the cameras all the time, and that was for me like 2018, maybe even 19, 18 mostly, like, yeah, I need this new camera. Then I was like, you know what? Just do the, work with the setup that you have and completely forget about getting a new camera. And then I realized, hey, I was actually able to get pretty much the results that I wanted to have with the setup that I had. Obviously, yeah, a little bit of research, but then that was like an interesting takeaway. Number two, let's say learning that was quite interesting and um, maybe one of the biggest points today even. There were all, you will always be one thing away from like feeling like now you have it all. So I wanna to talk to you about the little example with the headphones, a little realization of mine. What I started to realize is that the more we spend on things we don't truly need and want, we just feel like it would be cool. We just promise ourselves to get something from it. The more, like when we get it, the more we start to want to get even more things. And at the same time, the less we are excited about the purchases that we're making. So we're getting the phone a few weeks later, don't really care. We just get the laptop, we just get the camera, we just start to get a lot of stuff if we can. And the less I buy, the less I find myself, as I said, the mental space kind of like clears up, the less I find myself wanting to buy things. But if I then do buy things every once in a while, the more exciting and kind of like satisfying it is. So to give you an example, these little headphones, I saw they were kind of like on sale, I guess, and how excited I was about this purchase. Like for the day, I just had like this much better audio in my ears. It's just like like $40, no name, what is it, ACY headphones, I'm sure somebody's gonna ask, uh, just any random like mid mid range or lower range earbuds and for me because for like months and months I didn't give myself the dopamine hit from buying something and consuming like my my tolerance was really low of like not buying much in the last few months and so the small things then that you every once in a while allow yourself to get even though you don't really need them I'm gonna be honest I don't really need them but I love it I enjoy it and, and uh, so my tolerance for let's say the, what the brain does is for a lot of people purchasing stuff and getting the new things is connected to dopamine responses while we research it's almost like you know we're excited for the vacation but then we're on when we're on vacation very often people seem a little bit grumpy same with like buying you know when we research the things we're so excited it's gonna be so cool but then when we actually get it it's like nah, whatever you know and uh, so that was like a big takeaway. We will always be a, one thing away from still wanting to get a thing, but the more we're, let's say, gonna focus on intentionally spending, and the less actually, uh, actually we will want to get a new things, and the more, if we do get it, we will be satisfied with our purchase, investment, whatever. Just my personal experience. And the third point. And so I would say the biggest takeaway and learning that I had in a few years was again and again reinforcing in myself the belief that, hey, no matter where I go, no matter what I do, what matters for, let's say, the way of how I feel about myself is what I do day to day, how I treat people around me, how I treat myself, and not the things that I'm necessarily owning. And being able to live in, let's say, sometimes more humbly, it's also, let's say, a stoic approach, every once in a while live with the... Uh, let's say least means you can just to remind yourself hey you actually don't need that much and therefore let's say chase the right things for the right reasons and not fall into traps of marketing that try to poke on your little conversation with a buddy of mine a few days ago I've been sitting down had, having a drink we were talking about uh, for him a time where his business was really going low and he really needed to cut his cost and when he also made this experience that he had to like let's say cut down on his lifestyle but because he accepted it he was cool with it and he didn't really connect the things that he was having and the money that he was making to let's say his self-worth or at least he tried to detach it he was he it was like a beautiful experience of actually seeing like hey I don't need that much. So to wrap it up, I would say the biggest benefit from implementing ideas from minimalism, essentialism into my life was just attaining a certain freedom and a certain feeling of just knowing that, hey, in order to live a great life and feel amazing about myself, I don't need that much. And everything else is a bonus to kind of like break free from ideas and good marketing or let's say evil marketing if you want to that, that makes you believe that in order to have all of these things that we think we want just look cool feel good be accepted be respected actually we don't need to get the thing in the first place it's attained in another way this is something that i talk a lot about on my second channel 
and uh, definitely a certain feeling of freedom both very materially not having much just being able to move around also with its downsides for sure um, uh, living this lifestyle can be stressy as well stressful and so with that thank you very much for watching today's video smash the thumbs up button if you haven't yet really helps out to grow the channel and get this message out there so smash it right now and we're gonna see each other very soon